Hello, and welcome to another edition of Professor Black's History. Again, the reason we do these is not because we want you to know a lot of dates and things like that. We just want you to have some names of some people that you can look up in history who've done some extraordinary things. Also, a lot of times you can get inspiration once you uh, read the stories of other people. For example, anytime you try to do something in life, you've got to have a lot of obstacles. The most important thing is to trudge on, take on every obstacle, and eventually you will succeed. Kind of like our person that we're talking about today, Bessie Coleman. Bessie Coleman is someone who is a fascinating person. Now, many of you have heard of Amelia Earhart. A lot of you have probably even heard of Mae Jemison. But a lot of people, I'll guarantee you, have never heard the name of Bessie Coleman. At least not people of today. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Bessie Coleman. She was born in Texas, and she was born in a shack with a dirt floor. Her parents were sharecroppers. Uh, she eventually went to school um, and went through the eighth grade. Then she became a laundress, and she worked as a laundress until she made enough money to go to college. And she went to what is today Langston University in Oklahoma. But uh, she only had enough money to last her for about a year, so she only stayed there for a year. She stayed in Langston for a year, and she came back home to Texas, worked again as a laundress, but eventually moved to Chicago uh, to live with her brother, and she stayed with her brother for a while. She got a job as a manicurist, and um, after she became a manicurist, she worked that job for a while. But during that time, she was hearing stories of the new um, technology of aviation, and she wanted to learn to fly. So that's what she decided to make her life's mission was to learn to fly. Um, so she decided to make to fly, but there was only one problem, or at least maybe a couple of problems. First of all, she was African American. No white pilots would teach her how to fly because of that. And then because she was a woman and there were no African American pilots in the area of Chicago, uh, no one else would teach her. So she met Robert Abbott who was the publisher of the Chicago Defender, which was at that time probably the uh, biggest uh, black uh, publication in the nation. And um, he suggested that she learn French and go to France, where they were less racist, where she could go to France and, and learn to fly. And that's what she did. She taught herself how to uh, speak French. She went to France and learned to fly. Uh, she was intelligent, beautiful, and uh, very well spoken. And of course, the, uh, when she came back to America, she was the first African-American female to earn a pilot's license, and also the first African-American to earn an international flying license. But she came back to America, and she, she did what they call barnstorming. She went around uh, different towns putting on air shows. And her dream was to have a flight school for people of all colors, uh, people of all races, where anybody could come and learn to fly, especially African Americans. She wanted African Americans to get involved in this brand new technology of flight. Um, so anyway, uh, Bessie continued to barnstorm around the country, but uh, unfortunately, uh, at those times, of course, planes and things like that were not like they are today. Um, she had some uh, difficulties with her plane at one point, um, but then she was in Florida uh, preparing for an air show, and uh, the tradition was for them to fly over the area to decide exactly uh, where they would put on the show and, and how they would maneuver uh, in order to um, bring about the performance. So as uh, she was flying the day before her, her show in Florida, uh, they were flying uh, over the area where she was supposed to do her show the next day, and the plane took a dip, and as it took a dip, uh, it kind of flipped over. And uh, Bessie, because she was not wearing a seat belt, because she was kind of trying to look over the side to exactly see what was going on and where uh, she was going to be landing and things like that, because she also did parachute jumping. But anyway, she fell out of the plane. Uh, she was killed. A uh, short time later, her pilot fell out. Uh, the, the plane crashed with the pilot in it. Uh, they both died at tragic death. But she left a legacy of, uh, of adventure. She left a legacy to show that no matter what it is you want to do in life, if you are determined to succeed, you can do it. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be obstacles in everything you do. But in order to make it through, you have to persevere. Now, my grandmother used to have a great saying. She said, where there's a will, there's a way. So if you want it, go get it. We'll talk to you next time on Professor Black's History.